too long, and he will not make that mistake again. We'll see. Florida won the toss, and they have opted to receive the football. Marshall Morgan will kick off for the Georgia Bulldogs, and the deep man is Brandon Powell, number four for the Gators. Six and one, Florida, five and two, Georgia. Tom Ritter is the official, and we had a something new, a clock malfunction, but it's been fixed. Half the fans clad in orange and blue, the other in red and black. 80,000 plus. Morgan, that's going to be short and returnable. Brandon Powell bobbles it. It's loose at the 15 yard line. Oh boy. Gasps of relief among those who are dressed in orange and blue. Jim McElwain just tells Allie, we want a fast start. Just get out there and make things, whoa, happen. And I don't think that's what he had in mind. Oh, uh, no. Well, Florida does recover. And that means Treon Harris will get his second start of the season playing in his fourth game. He was the starter here last year and he suspend, uh, replaces the suspended Will Greer. Had a really effective game in their last outing. Despite the loss at LSU. Left guard. Kelvin Taylor and let's uh, cue the cow. Get him on stage. Starting lineups offensively for the Gators. Sharp, Ivy, Dillard, Thurman, and Halter up front. Jake McGee, a transfer from Virginia, has been a four. Siante Lewis, we expect them to open with two tight ends. And then Taylor, the wideouts, Robinson, and Powell. And they have. Wide split. Harris looking all the way. Being pursued, avoids the first man, gets up the sidelines, and he might have enough for a first down. Yeah, that's a winning play for Florida, but that's something that, as you see, Treon Harris avoid Tim Kimbrough, number 42. That's something that Georgia has to feel good about. When you're playing defense, and on the first pass of the game, you flush the other team's quarterback out, you go, okay, all right. We've got an option. We got a way to get that quarterback out of the pocket. Kelvin Taylor is alongside Treon Harris. Taylor a year ago in this game rushed for 197. He gets his first handoff here and he's got a huge gaping hole on the right side. Jake McGee with the block defensively for Georgia after that gain of 12. It's the freshman Thompson Mays Bailey. Floyd and he will stay on the outside most of the game. Jonathan Abram gets the start for Dominic Jenkins who, Sanders rather who will sit out the first half because of a targeting penalty in their last game. That was a win over Missouri. Jordan Conklin is the running back play fake it's lobbed out one handed catch by McGee. I'm not surprised at all that Doug Nussmeyer and Jim McElwain has come out in this game and tried to open up the game a bit with Treon Harris trying to kind of spread out that Georgia defense with the short passing game. Uh, Nussmeyer, McElwain, and Jeremy Pruitt all know each other very well from Alabama days, and they just kind of playing a little game of chess right now. Two wides to the right side and up the middle it goes. That's Brandon Powell. Normally a receiver out of the backfield. <laughs> Defensive changes now three of them for the Bulldogs. Third down three. Well last year every down was a run down in this situation for Florida. But I would have to think that this would be 
You know, will Florida want a runner here? It's an odd. They got number 80 in Lewis. They're blocking tight end. It's Taylor in motion and sets up wide right. Harris looks all the way this way. And that is Sidante Lewis. Wow, what a run. After the catch. So simple. Easy throws to the outside on the, of the formation. When you give your quarterback that type of an easy throw early in the game, you gain confidence not only in calling more plays, but your quarterback just feels, wow, this is going to be nice. Demarcus Robinson goes wide to the right after that 23-yard game. First down and 10. Lewis, the tight end, back on the field. He missed a couple of weeks with an injury. High snap. Harris controls it, rolls out. He's being chased, and he has to get rid of it. Rico McCraw, number 36, chasing Harris. Well, Georgia trying to keep that streak alive. The only team without a quarterback being scored against the first quarter. Second down 10. Opening drive of the ball game after Powell muffed the kickoff but did manage to recover. DeAndre Goolsby is split way out to the top. Harris, no pressure again. Intercept. Oh, oh my gosh. Tim Kimbrough. Well, this was a misread, miscommunication, or a very poor pass. Take whatever you want on it. There's Kimbrough trying to go to the tight end in the slot. And boy, this was way off. That was with about on a short pass like that to miss your intended receiver by about four yards is not a good omen. Should have been intercepted. And might have been returned for a touchdown. Yeah, I think Vern was right. That should have been intercepted. You get interception, I was thinking interception. Ahmad Fullwood is now the wide receiver, top of the screen. Third down ten. Roll out by Harris. Behind the receiver, Callaway. A lot of poor throws. Even the pass to Lewis for the big pass on the two. Remember Jake McGee caught it with one hand. So far, Treon Harris has not been on target with his throws. You can see that Nussmeyer and McElwain wanted to loosen him up and probably wanted to loosen up his quarterback. But uh, Treon did not throw the ball accurately on that first drive. Austin Harden, we thought he might miss this game with an injury. His backup, Jorge Powell, who had assumed his spot the last couple of weeks, is now out for the season. And this is a 45-yard attempt. No. Started right and stayed right. Nice and straight, but the yeah. wrong line. <laughs> he read it wrong, Vern. Ah, <laughs> oh, he missed a four-footer. <laughs> Middle of this Georgia huddle, number 10, Fatone Bauta, is about to come on and make his first start ever for the Georgia Bulldogs. He's a junior, born and raised in Brooklyn. The family moved to Florida. This is the seventh game in which he has played as a quarterback. He's played in every game this year, but as the holder on field goals and extra points. Yeah, that, that would be appeared, not played. Okay. Appeared. appeared. <laughs> you understand this from my perspective, he was playing. Okay, he, he, <laughs> this is playing. This will be playing today. <laughs> on the sidelines. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Wildcat, first play. Yes. So, Bauta is on the line of scrimmage wide to the right. Sony Michelle in the backfield gets the handoff. Stiff arm gets a good block on the edge. And here goes Michelle. There is a flag back at the 29. Well, on the pregame show, Coach Rick Neuheisel said coaches love to tinker. When they have a bye week, they love to get in there in the garage and just change up. And you can see. During the run, holding on the 48 offense, 10-yard penalty for the previous spot, replay first down. 
Well, that's on Quavon Hicks, the fullback. It wipes out a 27-yard run by Michelle. And it's a 10-yard penalty. Ouch. Now here's Bauta. See if he takes the snap. Georgia Bulldogs, after the Chubb injury, and recall he was uh, suffered the knee damage on the first play of the game in Tennessee two weeks ago. Actually, three weeks ago. Now about him. Played in three games at quarterback last year, three the year before. Red shirted, shirted in 2012. Michelle. Well, you can see Brian Schottenheimer has been aggressive with his game plan. First game play is a wildcat. Second play, you drop back and get your quarterback into the kind of the feel of the football game. And that enters Brandon Douglas. And this is how I learned how I thought you had to replace Chubb. You do it with the whole team. You don't just do it with the tailback Sony Michelle. That's another penalty for Georgia. That's on Colton Houston, the right tackle. So kind of a sloppy start. start. 75 offense, five yard penalty remains. Second down. And let's introduce you to the Chick fil A starting offense. Theus, Wynn, Kublano, Pike, Houston, Malcolm Mitchell. He's the best wide receiver they've got. Yeah, that's one of their problems. Their second receiver hasn't emerged really. Lately, though, Terry Godwin, and if a healthy Isaiah McKenzie is available today, that'll be a little help for Mitchell. Quick pass on the right side, incomplete. Led the uh, receiver a little too much. That was Godwin. Defensively, John Bullard has had uh, a terrific season in his senior year. He's joined by Brantley McAllister and Cox up front. I think most of you know about number one, Vernon Hargraves, perhaps the best cornerback in the SEC. Well, third down has been a problem down for Georgia in the SEC. They're 13th ranked out of 14 teams. This will be difficult. Handed off, Brandon Douglas. And that was, a, a, I think, a good decision by Georgia. Concede it, punt it. You don't want Bowda early in a football game who has had no experience other than holding to throw a ball on third and 16, 17 mm. yards. That's going to bring on Colin Barber. The net punting average for the Georgia Bulldogs this year, just short of abysmal, is 33.6 yards. And that's not all on Barber, but he's uh, only averaging 40. Bryce Ramsey is back now. This will be his second punt of the year. So the backup quarterback in place of Colin Barber, and they get a Georgia roll down to the 25-yard line. 49-yard punt for Ramsey. Many thought back in August he was going to be the starting quarterback. Time call. Well, at the beginning of the pregame show, I thought uh, Adam Zucker did a decent me. Yep. Rick Neuheisel did a decent you. P paybacks are tough. I got him. <laughs> when did I get him? I don't remember. Uh, a couple weeks ago. Alabama, Georgia, or something like that. But the winner of the uh, make believe <laughs> contest, without question, was Brian <laughs> as Atlee LaForce. <laughs> 8 58 to go, opening quarter. Second possession for the Gators. Kelvin Taylor. And Gary, you pointed out that on the first series, Treon Harris not on the mark with his passing. Well, of the nine first calls of the game, six of them were called as a pass. Remember, he scrambled on one. He had five throws, and yes, he was all over the ballpark with the football. In his start two weeks ago at LSU. Started fast. Yes. Through 17 for 32, 272 yards. Harris coming to the left side. Nice defensive play at the 31 by Malcolm Parrish, number 14. <laughs> 
Third down four. Well, let's see if the stars of this defense, Leonard Floyd and Jordan Jenkins, can make an impact rushing the pass. Three down. They might be bringing a blitz. They are not. Carter misses the tackle. And Harris runs out of bounds with a first down. Well, it was just a base rush that time. Two outside ends, Jenkins and Leonard Floyd come. Good protection, nobody open. If you got a seam, this is what Treon Harris brings to the table. When this starts happening, I'm telling you, Jeremy Pruitt will, not, will get a little tired of that. It's one thing when you blitz them and you flush them. When you bring in four and you get out of your lanes, you're going to want to bring that fifth rusher. That's Jeremy Pruitt, second year as the defensive coordinator for Mark Richt. Prior to that, defensive coordinator at FSU, and prior to that, Alabama. A lot of time, but the defensive backfield holds, and Harris is caught and dropped on first down. Jonathan Abram, who's getting the start. It's a really good job by Jawan Briscoe, number 12, right here. They're trying to drag a receiver across, and Briscoe searches him up and takes the throw away. Did not get his eyes caught in the backfield. When Treon Harris saw a red number 12, he had to tuck it and get out of the play. Harris, the leading ball carrier on the ground now. Four carries, 25 yards, including that last play for no gain. Second down, 10. Taylor. Nice cutback. Equally nice defensive play led by Leonard Floyd, number 84. The first man there. Vern uh, Gaines, was it Gaines make the play? Uh, but he was Briscoe, Briscoe again is the guy that forces it inside. Watch Briscoe come inside. I thought it was Briscoe. Actually, no, it was Timmy Kimber, 42, that forced him back into Gaines. My fault. Gaines is the leading tackler. That's uh, Lorenzo Carter, number seven. Gaines, who transferred from the University of Alabama at Birmingham and has been a solid player defensively. It's third down and six. Harris. <laughs> Incomplete. That was a back shoulder throw that ended up being a front shoulder throw. That's never helpful. No, that isn't. Very good coverage to the outside and Demarcus Robinson. He's backed up against Briscoe again. Watch. Good coverage and boom. There was nowhere to throw the ball. A good, again, series by this Georgia defense. I, I got to say, this is, these are not two offensive juggernauts we are watching. I agree. I just didn't want to say it. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's early. You would have got it. Okay. High, and it takes a backward hop. That is Johnny Townsend with the punt. And Georgia will get it for the second time in the first quarter. 5 11 remaining. Thus far, scoreless. Back to Jacksonville after this. Adam Zucker with this Ford update. Undefeated Oklahoma State in some deep trouble early against the Texas Tech offense. Pat Mahomes, zig, zag, and zip it over to Justin Stockton. They've connected twice for touchdowns, a 17-0 lead right now. They've lost six in a row to Okie State. Back to you, Vernon Gary. All right, Adam, thank you very much. And let's quickly check in with Ali LaForce. Vernon Gary, you can tell how anxious Bowdoin was to get back on the field. He did not sit down for an entire second, pacing the sideline, stopping by his position groups to talk with them briefly and make sure they were on the same page. He also had a few words with offensive coordinator Brian Schottenheimer, but other than that, he was just pacing back and forth, ready to get out there. Well, this year he com competed in the Charleston Southern game. And Troy, both victories, obviously. And here he is starting against Florida. First start ever. Roll out. Nice. 
Terry Godwin with the catch. Well, here's the temptation for both teams. Joshua Dobbs kept this Florida defense that's so good against the run off balance with these quarterback keepers. He also did it against Georgia. So both teams are saying, you know, we're having trouble running the ball. We One team lost Chubb. The other team, you know, they have not. You look at Florida in the SEC play, Kentucky 120, Tennessee 109, Ole Miss 84, Missouri the best of the year, just 129 yards rushing. No rushing attack for this Florida football team in the SEC. Well, Tom Ritter stopped the play. And they're replaying the catch. Yep, going. That's it. It was be prior to the snap, so they are going to the replay booth. It was on the bootleg play. And let's see if they got the spot right properly, too. Okay, so ball is. I don't think it looked like it hit the ground there to me. It, to you, Vern, you got a better no. monitor. What do you got? <laughs> Have you, this is a theme. We uh, a theme here. Seniority Looks about has the, its advantages. I don't think it did. No, looks but like it also got, looks like the ball is passed a little farther upfield, maybe another yard farther. Yeah, but that's where he catches it. You know, he actually ends up controlling it. Let's see. He's passed the numbers there. His knee is down. No, you hear the crowd reactions. It's the ball was bobbled, but I didn't see him drop it. The ruling on the field was confirmed. Yep. Yep. It was a completed catch. Check it out. Steve Landis is the replay official, and that was uh, done in nice time. Nice time. Know what I'm trying to say. It was efficient. Steve, I think, has a quick flight out of here afterwards. He's going to try to keep this as quick as possible. <laughs> oh, goodness. 4.45 to go. Scoreless first quarter. Brendan Douglas is the running back. That's Christian Payne, the fullback. Payne leads the way. Oh, boy. <laughs> not very far. Antonio Morrison. Woo. This Florida defense is very unique. You know, the front defensive linemen compare favorably to Alabama. Their linebackers are tough to block because they're so quick. You got Jared Davis and Antonio Morrison. Even when the linemen get up to that second level, these two guys duck underneath them and go back door. You saw exactly Davis hit the play and Morrison made the tackle. Now it's Douglas behind Bauta. Oh, he doesn't get there. Fourth down. And we talked about those front guys up there. Oh, and it's John Bullard. It is number 90. I think he is probably one of the best rush defensive tackles in this league. He and Jared Reed, I think, from Alabama are the best two in this league. Well, Bryce Ramsey is going to punt for the second time. This will be his third punt of the year. We mentioned that the net punting average for Georgia was abysmal at 33.6. Collins Barber is normally the punter. Here's a fair catch called by Hargraves who backs up and snags it at the 27 yard line. Three oh nine to go opening quarter. Georgia. Florida. Back in Jacksonville, Florida Gators and Georgia Bulldogs scoreless, 3:09 to go. Let's check in with Allie LaForce. Vernon Gary, we saw Sony Michelle run off of the field. I did see the athletic training staff taping his right wrist. He put his glove back on. He went back in the game. Then he came back to the training staff. They taped his wrist again, but decided that it needed to be evaluated further. I'll let you know as I hear more. Wow, Gary. Well, he, he's had one run, the first run of the play of the game. There it is. He kind of lands on his right wrist right there. This one was called back, and then he caught one pass. Well, they lose Chubb for the season on the first play of the Tennessee game. Off to a brilliant season. And now Sonny Michelle, who uh, 
replaced him in the starting backfield in the locker room. Here's Harris, flushed out to the right, chased by Floyd. Let's it go. Mm. Not an auspicious start for Treon Harris. Well, as you look at Jim McElwain, I mean, his ability to get the most out of his quarterback and not hurt his team, listen to this stat. Since he's been in this league, as a coach in the SEC and then as a head coach at Colorado State and now back this year, his touchdown to interception ratio with his quarterback when he's been involved, nine touchdowns for every one interception. That's called good coaching. Harris has missed his last five. And off after the 35 yard line is Kelvin Taylor. Taylor's numbers this year have really been modest as well. They, their running game is not the, the most uh, nope. obvious nope. No, uh, they're, attribute they're, they have. They're ranked uh, in, in 107th in the country. <laughs> That's not good. They've done it with great defense, not turning the ball over, and great field position. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but their punt coverage team, kickoff coverage team have done a great job as well. And they have turned it over only twice in SEC play thus far. No turnovers last three games. That's Florida. And Harris has to call a timeout. Timeout, Florida. That is their first charge timeout of this half. 2-10, first quarter. No score. How you doing? Hey, how are you? NFL today, the coach, JB. Bart Scott. Boomer, Tony Gonzalez, the whole group. The NFL Today presented by Southwest Airlines. Third down five. They bunch receivers to the left side. Solo receiver top of the screen. Blitz threatened, blitz coming. A little late, but oh, look at Harris. He got away for the moment, but then Davin Bellamy, number 17, gets the stop. Well, you know, it is a guy coming from the second level, but Georgia really only rushed four on this play. They had a three man line, and in that play, Lorenzo Carter was the fourth man. He's basically a defensive end lined up in a different position. Right now, this Georgia defense, I think, is feeling great about themselves. Remember what happened a year ago and how they're feeling now? They've pitched pretty well to start this game. Here's Johnny Townsend's second punt, high. And let's see if Reggie Davis calls a fair catch. He does. He grabs it at the 30-yard line. Never miss a moment of college football with the CBS Sports app. Every play and score, every game, and every highlight, right as they happen. Download the CBS Sports app now. Well, you got Nick Chubb, who was uh, off to a wonderful start. Out for the year with a really rough knee injury. Sony Michelle, his backup, and also worked as a as a wide receiver, so he filled so many slots. And we don't have an update yet. He went to the locker room. Here's Bowler, short, got him. Jeb Blazevich, the tight end. Again, the theme I think for Brian Schottenheimer in this game is we all have to replace our running back. We just can't have our tailback replace our running back. A little bit of everything. Play action. Intercepted. Picked off at the 50. That's Marcus May, second interception of the season. Well, in this one, Bauda really thought Isaiah McKenzie was going to cross the face of the defender. McKenzie is coming across and watch when Bouta throws the ball. He believes he will cross the face of number 20 May. He never got to the spot. May beat him to the spot and Bouta says what? I thought I had him. That's good defense. That's a safety that understands the concept of the crossing game and he must have read a little bit of a slow delivery because he jumped it. After the turnover, first down 10 at midfield. Plus 10 
for the season that's fourth best in the country and as we mentioned they have only two turnovers in SEC play both interceptions by the way both thrown by Treon Harris who is in a quarterback right now he is two of seven and it's been the story as Georgia takes time out here it's been the story of Florida season out. Georgia that is their first charge timeout not only have they not been turning it over but the turnovers for Florida have been in very good field position Monday on CBS see why Supergirl is TV's number one new show critics call it fantastically super and just plain fun don't miss a new episode Monday at 8 7 central only CBS interception at the 50 first down and 10 Florida scoreless game late first quarter that's McGee the tight end coming to rest on the left side hand off Taylor Father Jake, Fred, of course. Excuse me, Gary. That's all right. Jake Guinness Vern did the exact same thing that Antonio Morrison did for uh, Florida on the series before. He just shot that back gap, just got behind the double team and makes the play. Watch him right here. Just come in from behind the play, behind the double team, and make the play. Well, Jordan Jenkins has missed the last two with a groin injury. Started today, but back on the bench. Right now, second down, eight. Harris. That was tipped up. Yes, yeah. it was. By Chris Mays in the middle of that defensive line. Well, Leonard Floyd. Jacobs may be on the bench, but the other bookend, Leonard Floyd is always a threat jumping stretching around and you have to do a good job of him and it's a real tough assignment to put your running back on that defensive end he may be a linebacker on the note card but on the field he's a defensive end Jordan Cronkite wide right top of the screen third down eight Powell in motion. Harris deep left side overshoots Demarcus Robinson number 11 fourth down. And this is a little bit painful for both offensive coordinators. They cannot find anything to latch on to early in this football game. As I sit here stand here and watch it. I just got a feeling it's going to be a turnover. You know, I mean it's, because neither teams looks like I would assume both Offensive staffs will be conservative because they just feel that they don't believe the other team can drive the whole length of the field up. They're going to force the quarterback to make a mistake. Johnny Townsend with the punt. Fair catch again. Oh, bobbled it. There it's it loose in the end zone. Touchdown. Nick Washington recovered it. Number eight. Gonna wait for a mistake. Teams play. Just not knowing where you are on the field. I mean, why would have he even caught it? Well, it was on the five yard line. Now, there's no need to even call a fair catch. Just get out of the way and let it land. Totally agree. Austin Harden for the extra point. Knocked down. This blocked. This can be returned. It's picked up. Reverse. Now they're trying to set up the wall on the right side. Out of bounds. Jonathan Abram. But it's six nothing, and there is a flag. <laughs> Flag is at the 33-yard line, far side of the field. 
looked like the hit was a little bit out of bounds on the play. I wonder if they're calling a late hit on it. Sonny Michelle has returned. Yeah, he's got that, as Allie told you, she snuffed that one out. That right wrist was what they were attention to, and that's what looks like he's got the protection on it right there coming out of the locker room. Here's Tom Ritter. There are two fouls on the play, both, both by Florida. Had an illegal block in the back, number 53, Florida. That penalty is declined by rule. We had a dead ball, personal foul, Florida. That penalty we set on the kickoff, number 98. He got all of it right, but his direction, his yes. compass is upside down. <laughs> Coming from the right side of your screen, yeah, that's oh, yeah. pretty much uh, out, of, out of play right there. Pretty easy call. We've reached the end of the first. Florida leads it 6 nothing. We'll return to Jacksonville after this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. Six nothing extra point block score on a muffed punt return attempt. And we begin the second quarter burn on this. Gary Danielson, Ali LaForce. Austin Harden will kick off. Reggie Davis backs up, grabs it at the four. Bowled over. I think Austin Harden was part of that tackle. He was indeed. And let's go back to the muffed punt return and the touchdown. Yeah, now watch where Reggie Davis, he's got his heels right on the 10 yard line, exactly the way the coach says, signals fair catch, and then he drifts as the ball drifts, catches it on about the five. I think Tabor number 31 actually knocked it forward, forward and then the touchdown. So Reggie Davis listened to the coach at the beginning, but the finishing of the coaching point is don't ever back up. Let's Bauta comes near side, caught by Malcolm Mitchell. And he uh, works his way close to the first down. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm turning just, around. You were watching intently watching down here. And I just didn't, you know, <laughs> the back of your head. Uh, yeah, uh, well, it's a good side. Well, this, if you're Georgia, <laughs> zero first downs, yeah. 26 yards of offense. Yeah, I think they need to go to the running game with the quarterback. The zone read, if Sony Michelle gets back on the field, though, that will help about on the play. But, you know, he got one. He's back. Pass there. Boy, I'll tell you. Um, Jeff Collins, I did talk to the defensive coordinator with Florida. I talked to Jeff on the field. I asked Jeff Collins as we watched this play unfold, Jeff, we don't know who's starting at quarterback. Do you? And he said, no. I said, do you care? And he said, no. I know what they're going to do. They're going to try to run their quarterback a bit. There's Jeff. Michelle wide or alongside, not wide. He's on the field. Malta completed. Sony Michelle. Let's go down to uh, Ali LaForce. Sony Michelle went back into the locker room. They taped up his right wrist. They also taped his middle two fingers together on the right hand. He came back out. He took some some passes from Grayson Lambert. He practiced handoffs. He decided that he was good enough to go back in the game. Also an update on linebacker Jordan Jenkins. He's still suffering from the groin injury he suffered weeks ago. They did intend on him playing today. It's just a matter of if they think someone else can do it better. All right, Allie, thank you. Malcolm Mitchell wide to the right. Everybody else in tight. Last time they didn't pick it up, remember? Yep. Play action. Wide open. Bound has got him open. Oh, behind him. Yep. Wide open. Jay Rome. There's only a few times in a game that a offensive coordinator can dial one up and give his team an opportunity for a touchdown. 
Okay, OCEs is what I call them. Offensive coordinator explosions. And Shotty gave him one right there and the quarterback didn't get it to him. Fourth and one, Georgia will go for it. They trail by six. Third, fourth down attempt. Just feels like they're outflanked here to the right, doesn't it? Toss, Michelle, chased, cuts it up, he's in trouble. And the trouble begins with Jonathan Bullard. Well, I tell you, this Florida defense can move. They look out of place, and they make up space and make plays as quick as anybody as you could see. Bullard first there. Marcus May was number two. Zero. 388 passing, 84 rushing, four flipping touchdowns, and a high five from the opposing coach. Tonight, Christian McCaffrey, the nation's leader in all-purpose yards, takes Stanford to Washington State. And on CBS Sports Network, we'll see six foot seven Paxton Lynch and undefeated Memphis against Tulane. Back to Jacksonville. All right, Adam, thank you. Six nothing here. Let's go back and look at the missed opportunity. Well, as the defensive back is looking into the backfield right here, you can see the tight end, how open he will be on the play. Ten yards in the open, the ball is thrown behind. When you get down on the field, sometimes you see a level of it. You say, oh, I was a little crowded. From up here, I, you never get a one better than that. Kelvin Taylor, the running back. That's McGee, the tight end, coming to the near side. Here's Taylor. That was a great cut. He pushed the edge. He pushed it wide. He was setting up the block to the outside. And the last second, he cuts behind McGee's block. It's exactly how you do it. If you cut too soon, the blocker in front of you who can't see you can't make the block. But if you push it, push it, push it, plant that foot and go, perfect run. Taylor with 40 yards on seven carries. Gets the give and goes left this time. A couple of yards on first down. You know, Vern, I was looking at my old board from my notes from the original Florida game we did this year against Tennessee. And the note I both wrote in real big letters is, who is their go-to guy? Does Florida have a go-to player? Uh, who's a difference maker on the offense? Well, it turns out that Antonio Callaway has turned out to be that guy. And what has happened is his presence has made everybody else better. Powell, Taylor, and McGee. But it's all coming off 81. He's the one the defense has to be aware of. And he is a freshman. One of the stars of the 6-1 season, Kelvin Taylor, never bigger than on fourth and 14 against Tennessee. He's had a dramatic season. Here's the fourth down pass, 63 yards for the game-winning touchdown. Two weeks ago against LSU, a return punt, 72 yards. That tied the game at 28. For to end up falling to LSU on what else from Les Miles but a fake field goal. Yeah. Well, it's a key play again. Let's see if that front four from Georgia can put pressure will be or will Georgia have to bring a linebacker to help I wouldn't Treon Harris has had a real good record against blitzing his stats are very good and he will face four man rushing and that one nothing nothing even if it was caught Abram was going to eat that up on the field for Georgia just to give you an example of what this Georgia team is building on the field regularly has been number 25. That play right there, a true freshman. Jawan Briscoe, number 12. We saw him early in the secondary, a true freshman. Enrico McGraw, number 36, a true freshman. Three true freshmen have been prominently featured in this Georgia secondary here in the first quarter in a little bit. Johnny Townsend, as Harris has now missed his last eight passes. And Davis this time. He can't win. He runs away from it, and it bounces. And it's at better the than the last one. Oh, though. I agree. Yeah. Florida is the only Southeastern Conference team in this league that is in the top ten net punting in the whole country. Townsend is very, very good at it.
six nothing Florida one year ago in this game down by seven the Gators set the tone running a fake field goal with Holder Michael McNeely he went down the right side 21 yards for the score that tied the game at seven and guess who is down on the sideline with Ali LaForce. Mike, a year ago, you were considered by many a hero of this game and because of the picture of you bagging groceries at Publix that went viral the very next day. What's it like this time to be here as a fan and watch your brother who's in the band? Yeah, it's very different. Um, certainly an experience I didn't have last year, you know, being in the game. Um, it's wonderful to get to see my brother play and my brother's on the team um, out here competing. You said, let's watch this play and then we'll keep going. All right. From inside the three yard line. Fatone Bauta at quarterback backs in the eye with Sony Michelle, the deep back, stutters and is stuffed. Let's go back to Al. You told me that that exciting moment last year sort of brought life full circle for you because of a moment that happened to you in high school. Can you share that moment with all of our viewers? Sure. Um, so in high school, there was a very similar play. I was running um, a fake punt. It was for the district championship against the back-to-back -back district champs. We were down um, by two, and we ran a, a fake punt in the fourth quarter, and I ended up messing up that play. As I turned to run, I fumbled it. They ended up returning it for a touchdown. And we ended up save the rest. Sa oh, save the end. We're going to watch this next play, too. All right. Play action. Left side caught diving catch. That'll be at the six. Okay, so you ended up fumbling it. Right, and they returned it for a touchdown. And so we ended up losing that game 30 to 28. That was uh, the game winning score. So um, for me personally, that was really crushing. Um, so to be able to come back and um, you know, have that opportunity again. Coaches are very superstitious about trick plays, and so that play in practice, it worked great um, the whole time. And so going into that game, you know, there was no hesitation to run it. And so the night before, Coach Muschamp had told us we were going to run that on the first opportunity on the half. So you can imagine, um, you know, kind of what was going through our mind. Um, but it was just for it to work the way it did, it was, it was tremendous and really brought um, some fulfillment athletically and personally. Um, for me spiritually just in many different realms you took your second chance and you ran with it congratulations and you're not still bagging groceries are you i'm not no i retired <laughs> everybody wanted to know thanks so much mike well, thank you well he went back to work in Publix the day after the game my gosh well here we go third down and seven georgia at the six Jay Rome is the tight end in motion. From the end zone, Bauta lets it go. Caught by Mitchell. First down. Well, let's give half of this completion to the offensive line. Backed up in your own end zone, you call a pocket pass on third down, and that group comes through. Theus win, Blano, Pike, and Houston. Look at that nice pocket. Allows Bauta to step up into it and go to his number one receiver on the play. Best play of the day, I think, for the Georgia offense. And a first down out at the 15, maybe at the 16-yard line. Here's Bauta rolling out, lobs it. It's caught by Jay Rome. That's fumbled out of bounds. It will be a first down. Alex McAllister that time, number 14, was in between. He didn't know if he should take the crossing tight end or go for Bauta, and that's why Bauta's playing in this football game. An injured player down. I think it's Jeremy Powell, number 23. Yes. Powell rotates in there at inside linebacker with Morrison and Davis. Time has been taken. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Uh, Jeremy Powell was able to walk off the field without assistance. He's now getting help from the training staff and the medical staff. And peeking at this play, actually, Powell was playing in that Sam linebacker position outside. CeCe Jefferson, his own teammate, fell on his leg. 
Powell's playing in a position that Florida's been hurting at with Alex Anzalone number, uh, injured. That was a, one of the key players that their staff talked about that they miss mightily against LSU. You know, LSU's just downhill, and it's hard to go nickel package against LSU. And if they would have had Anzalone, they feel they would have even done a better job against them in the run game. On first down, 10, Georgia trailing by six. Has the ball at their own 27. Here's a cross, Michelle. To the 32 yard. Well, this is the continuing story of Florida's football this year. Look at where the Georgia team has started their drives in this game. And you look at this in five SEC games, only seven drives have started better than the 40-yard line, only one in plus territory in SEC football. And that's when McIlwain went for it against LSU on fourth and 10. No short drives. About it. Behind the receiver, but he made the catch, and guess who? Malcolm Mitchell had 35 coming into this game. And that's the formula that Jim McElwain told Alley at the start of the game. Let's not turn it over, make them take the long field, and see if they can make six or seven first downs going down the field. Well, they moved from their own three out to the 39 yard line. Keith Marshall back on the field. Wearing number four. Valta. Watch out from behind. Watch out in front of you. Got to hold on to the ball. Reggie Davis with another drop. Boy, that was a wonderful job by Valta. He felt the pressure coming from behind. Hung in the pocket that time. His own offensive lineman trying to clean up from behind, but a perfect throw. And Reggie Davis is struggling right now. He's feeling the pressure of making mistakes. Good job by Mark Rick right there. Pats him on the back or behind. A little lower than the back, it looked like. With only Malcolm Mitchell is really the only go-to receiver here. He thinks he needs Davis later Thank in the you game. In the clock on the snap. Question is, if you're a Georgia offensive coordinator, coordinator when do you give up on a guy? Mm -hmm. One more drop, and that might say, I can't live with it anymore. I got to go with somebody else. Malcolm Mitchell is wide to the right. Corner blitz coming. About to stand strong, goes man for man, right side. Hargraves defending. And it's going to be ruled incidental contact. There is no flag. Caught it out of bounds, even if it was incidental. Yeah. Yep. That's a great matchup right there. Two future NFL football players fighting on this play. Hardgraves, Mitchell. Great position by Hardgraves. <laughs> Mitchell throws him out of the way and catches it out of bounds. Well, we've now set the standard of what can happen in these one-on-one -on -one plays. I uh, know, Vernon, that's not even funny. I think both coaches now will say, if that's the way it's gonna happen, too many men in the backfield for Georgia, that's gonna be an illegal substitution. Oy. If that's what they're gonna allow, that means you can go more bump and run and start blitzing. Dead ball, substitution infraction, on the offense, 12 players in formation, five yard penalty, third down. So now the officials, you know, we remember it, Vern, but the officials remember this play, too, and go, you know, if I didn't call that one, I'm not going to call one later. You know, you're you're going to get ready to do basketball again. Same routine. You and Raph will be sitting there. Say, nice did, weather. Did you see that incidental contact <laughs> exactly. in the Georgia-Florida game? <laughs> yeah. If you're looking for a definition in the SEC, that's it. Incidental <laughs> contact. <laughs> Third down, Bauta all day, goes deep, overthrown, incomplete, almost intercepted. Keanu Neal had a hand on it. Brian Poole, those safeties and uh, nickelbacks for this Florida defense, they just seem to eat up all of these crossing routes. That time the ball was intended to Terry Godwin, but Brian Poole, number 24, was right there. Forced a high throw. Bryce Ramsey apparently is going to do the punting chores for the remainder. This time Callaway will be back there. Yes. Better be a good one. Ramsey has not gotten off two good ones yet. Callaway 
Awaits the punt. That was a good one. Oh, yes. Callaway has to back way up. It'll bounce at the 15. Back to the 20 and then touched at the 21 yard line. Six nothing. Treon Harris has missed his last eight. He'll be at quarterback when we come back. Miss holding serve in the SEC West. All right, Adam, thank you. The uh, Mark Richt is uh, in his 15th year, 15th game he has coached in this rivalry. Uh, graduate of the University of Miami, longtime assistant there, offensive coordinator. And you might view that as a segue to the Ducks' arrival. And the Aflac, Aflac trivia question Who was the starting quarterback for Miami in Mark Richt's senior year? And he was, of course, a quarterback for Miami. First down, 10. Oh my gosh, Harris, bounce pass. Juwan Briscoe, who's been a factor in this first half. Yeah, that time it was a run blitz, even though the corner is coming from that side. Because of the college game and the wide hashes, a lot of teams bring that corner on fourth down as their eighth man in the box. It's a run blitz, and that time, Treon Harris did a good job just getting away from it and getting an incomplete pass. Nine incomplete. They give it to Taylor. Nice run. Short of the first down, he's uh, not yet to the 30-yard line. Yeah, ran right through Timmy Kimbrough, which is not easy to do. Number 42 was sitting right in the hole that time. Ran right through the arm tackle, got to the second level, and made a positive play. Really, that time, Georgia defended first down, could have got a sack. Second down, could have got it for one or two yards. And look at Florida now. They're third and three yards with an opportunity to pick up a first down. Deontay Lewis, number 80, among the bunch on the left side. Kelvin Taylor fights for the first down yardage and has it. That's what we talked about. When Treon Harris got out of the first down play, then on second down, you just set it up. You have an opportunity to move the chains. Well called by Doug Nussmeyer. Well executed on third down. And I think both Treon Harris and Kelvin Taylor saved it for Florida on that, on that series so far. Kelvin Taylor 11 carries 57 yards again a reminder that in this game a year ago he had 197 Matt Jones had 192 now that's, Jordan Scarlett is in that's not good is it for I, I don't think so okay. <laughs> no when you when you give up 418 rushing yards to an opponent Most never a good thing number 80 offense five yard penalty Remains first down. Just to give you an idea of how struggle it has been for Florida to run the ball this year, and Coach McElwain has tried and had to find ways to manufacture points. In the Southeastern Conference games, conference games this year, Florida only has one rushing play for more than 20 yards. Just one all year. Mm. First down 15. Scott it. Goes left. One of two freshman running backs, and that's Jake Gaines with another tackle. Well, Jordan Scarlett kind of earned his rushes in this football game during the LSU week. I talked to offensive coordinator Doug Nussmeyer, and he said that week he was Leonard Fournette. Oh, boy. That week. And he showed the defense and gained some confidence that, hey, give me the ball. Of course, you know, those freshmen, as they learn the package, the second half of the year at running back, they're better than the first half. But he earned it by being the scout team winner for net in the LSU week. Now he comes. Bottom of the screen. Harris flushed out, goes to his left, lobs it deep. It's caught. Antonio Callaway. Touchdown. 
66 yards. You know how important 0 for 9 is? It's not. It's the next one. Just keep playing. Keep playing. Austin Harden with the extra point. Sterling Baylor blocked the last one. That's why we're at 12 nothing. My gracious. Callaway freshman from Miami. Terrific speed as you could tell. Provided the game winner in Tennessee fourth and 14 for 63 yards. He adds the second touchdown here. And Florida after the extra point cuts inside the left upright. Leads by 13. Well it's true freshman against true freshman. Jonathan Abram in the slot is going to end up having to cover number 81. Goes up. Watch Abram come up out there. But now watch the technique. This is a guy that understands football. He slows down and then catches it over his shoulder. Instead of running away from the ball and reaching back and allowing the defender by slowing down and let the ball hit him in stride, he actually shields the defender away. You can't teach it any better than that. Five plays, 79 yards. And we're back in Jacksonville where Florida has increased the lead 13 nothing ball you decide for the game dressed as a banana you get on TV yeah and then your team is down 13 nothing well I mean Georgia got their receiver open and the quarterback missed him Florida gets their receiver open quarterback hits him so the quarterbacks make the big bucks <laughs> <laughs> how many years in the NFL 13 not enough <laughs> Never enough. Well, you do, got I you. still dream about it. Isn't that funny? I, I don't dream about a lot of other things. Yeah. But I still dream about playing. Weird. Reggie Davis oh, runs into his own man. Wow. And field position. Really want to salute the quarterback, Treon Harris, here. You know, a little bit of pressure inside. He feels it. He has to buy time because he knows he wants to go deep. But watch as he lets this ball go as he goes to his left. There's a misnomer about people with quarterbacks. They think when quarterbacks run to their left, they're throwing across their body. It's actually the opposite. When you're going left, it frees up your arm. When you're going to your right, you have to throw across your body. That's an easy throw for a quarterback. Fatone Bauta is still the quarterback, and Sony Michelle gets uh, one or two. Let's get the duck back on stage. And uh, Mark Richt, quarterback at Miami, graduated in 82. Who was the starting quarterback? Well, there is an answer to it. Jim Kelly. There was some talent on that team. It sure was. Well, there's nothing. There's nothing. Nothing. Well. Take a look at this quarterback group. Earl Morrill was the coach. My first coach with the Lions. You got Vinny Testaverde, Kyle Vanderwende, Jim Kelly, Mark Richt, and Bernie Kosa. You think Kyle Vanderwende is thinking, that's not fair. <laughs> he, he might own half of Miami for all I know. There you go. <laughs> well, George is the visiting team, so they get to look into the setting sun now. On this Halloween. Third down seven. Bout a hit. That's up in the air. It's intercepted by Vernon Hargraves. Hargraves avoids the tackle from Bouta. Heads to his left. Well, Alex 
Mitch McAllister is the guy who got the hit on Bouda. Coming around the corner, McAllister reaches out. Watch him coming off the right side of the screen right there and reaches out and taps the ball. He gets his left hand on it. And then when Vernon Hargraves gets the ball in his hand, he's about as athletic a player as we have in this I'm league. Malik, McAllister does it. And Hargraves gets it, and he almost takes it to the house. And the same formula that Florida has been using all year has come through again. They don't just turn it over. They turn it over in great field position. Remember, they already got one touchdown, and now on the five or four-yard line, whatever it is. Timeout, Georgia. 13 nothing is the lead. Might be more after this. AT&T presents the strong. And we're back in Jacksonville, 13 nothing. Interception by Hargraves and Florida with a first down and goal. 329 to go before halftime. Kelvin Taylor, the running back. He's rushed 11 times for 58 yards. Harris, nine incompletions in a row, and then he hit a 66-yard pass for the touchdown. Taylor, left. Taylor to the three, maybe the two and a half. Tim Kimbrough makes the stop. Jim McElwain, offensive coordinator for Nick Saban at uh, Alabama. Head coach, three years, Colorado State and Fort Collins. His last year there, they went 10 and 2. He said he thought Montana versus Montana State was big. And he also did a neutral site game. Yeah. Colorado State, Colorado. That's right. Brian Cox. In the backfield, leads the way for Taylor. Gets a great block in the end zone, and Taylor strolls in. Well, you use all your tools, and Brian Cox, number 94, is right there. He looks to go block. He gets to the outside, and he goes, all right, I'll shove this guy right here. Whatever. I was supposed to help inside, but there's nobody in there. I'll just shove the last guys. And he did. Austin Harden on to make it, uh, to attempt to make it 20 to nothing. A muffed punt return attempt. Recovered in the end zone for the first touchdown. And then Callaway 66 yards for the second. And now Taylor gets the touchdown. There is a flag. There's no foul on the play for Leafy. Number 84 did not land on another player. The kick is good. Kelvin Taylor, 13 carries, 63 yards, one touchdown. Florida up by 20. Well, coming up, the Geico halftime report. We'll go back to New York. Adam, Rick, and Brian update on all the scores around the country. On this ninth week of college football, And the Gators lead this one 20 to nothing. Oh, to be young, I think. What? Yep. It's Halloween. It's early. <laughs> I know my crew at home still putting the paint on right now. <laughs> they don't mess up my office. It's the only thing I have. Stay out of my office. You do have some crew, don't you? That one will... Uh, And now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot 
tools for success. Here. Well, we thought Alex McAllister had a seven-point play, but in reality, he had a 14-point play because look at Malcolm Mitchell against Quincy Wilson. You think a tool was successful? The stop and go was for a touchdown. So if he does not tip that play, it's not a seven-point play for Florida. The tool actually produced a 14-point turnaround. First down 10 at the 25. Bauta is still in there. The tone Bauta under duress. Nice dive. He picked up nine. And again, the formula for Florida has worked all year. Long fields, no big plays. You marry the pass rush with good man coverage in the backside, and you make the other team go the long way. Second down, Michelle bumped behind the line. He loses yardage. It'll be third down. Joey Ivy. Well, Grayson Lambert, the transfer out of Virginia, started the first seven games. He's wearing the yellow cap today. Well, remember, if you're Georgia, you remember that Tennessee was down 24 to 3. Okay, so this is their time if you're Georgia. You're going to get the ball in the second half. You go down there and put something on the board, get the ball in the second half, and make it a football game. Third down one. About a low. Oh, geez. Wow. I would not be shocked. I mean, Bowda's done some good stuff, but you know, I remember when Alabama start, switched up quarterbacks and Jake Coker had to go to the bench. Remember when we talked to Jake, he said, I was ticked. I was mad and I let Nick Saban know I was mad. And when he went back in that Ole Miss game, he's been a different football player. Could Grayson Lambert now, after having the coach say, no, you're not good enough to start this game against Florida, could he get back out on the field and do some or will Mark Rick stick with Bowden? Here's Bryce Ramsey, the third quarterback. This is not a good one. Hargraves, fair catch called for 31 yard line. 36 yard punt. Well, we're looking forward to next weekend. We'll begin in the afternoon with uh, Arkansas. And then at night, prime time, LSU at Alabama. A guy named Fournette. A guy named Derrick Henry. Two of the better teams in college football. Prime time, LSU and Alabama from Tuscaloosa. Well, I tell you, this McElwain has produced a lot of two-minute drills in his career. Now, he doesn't have A.J. McCarron playing quarterback for him. And will, how aggressive will... Well, that's how aggressive. about that? <laughs> Kelvin Taylor to the 47-yard line. Now every play in the playbook is available. What a push on the right side of that offensive line. And Taylor has found his footing in this game, hasn't he? My goodness. 14 carries, 86 yards. I think that's Trenton Thompson, isn't it? Yes, number 78. Yes, Another, it is. He's earned his starting spot on this group. This Georgia team is young, but they have problems starting stopping the run inside. And without him, it'll get a little tougher. I don't think Georgia has much trouble with the wide runs, but the inside runs have been giving them problems. Mm -hmm. Here's the freshman limping off. Started about the last uh, the last three or four games. And James Deloach, number 89, has taken his spot. Florida calls timeout with oh, they have two nope. left. They nope. have two left. Well, that's what you're talking about. Vern, you kept saying nine in a row. Nine in a row. Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's it's like hit the home run, doesn't matter. <laughs> you can strike out, but you better hit the deep ball. It's gonna be third and about three. Yeah. Maybe a little longer. Clock stops with 39 seconds to go. The 
McGee, Callaway, here's Treon Harris. Again, he is starting in place of the suspended Will Greer. Yeah, Jake, Jake McGee has been a first down maker for this team in these situations. Yeah, Leonard nope. Floyd came around the, the back end that time. And I think Bellany cleaned it up that time. Here's Will Greer, starter for the year, suspended for violating the NCAA's policies. Suspended for the rest of this season and the first six games next year, but he is appealing that decision. And uh, Jim McElwain telling us yesterday that he and the staff are helping with the appeal. Of a young man who'd had a good start this year, Will Greer. And the Gator fans applauding. Well, that's kind of a, an applause, I guess. Well, from half the crowd, it's split. The other half is an applause. No, 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 no. <laughs> Pretty ugly half for Georgia. Oh, my god. They gosh. had their opportunities both times. They did not make the play. Rushing yards, just one indicator. 118 for Florida. A total of 15 yards on the ground for Georgia. And Brian Schottenheimer gave them two touchdown plays. They came 0 for 2. Let's go down to Allie, who's with Mark Richt. Coach, three big turnovers made it difficult to score. Two of those were right. interceptions by Bauta. Will you stick with him in the second half or consider a change? We're going to figure out what to do is best, and that's block better. We can't, uh, we haven't run the ball well. Guys haven't caught the ball well. Obviously, one of the balls he was hit while, while he was thrown. So uh, we'll, we'll take we'll try to make a decision on what to do with that. But uh, the bottom line is we got to get something going on offense, running the football and protecting a little bit better. Thank you, coach. All right. Well, it's hard to argue with that, but he also had a cut, at least one big shot early in the game at bottom missed. That puts a real different picture on this football game, I think. 20 nothing Florida. Let's go down to the sideline. Moments ago, Alley with Jim McElwain. Coach Georgia gave you a lot of gifts in that first half, but how do you assess the way your team played? Well, I got to tell you, our defense playing good, and, and uh, we're playing pretty good field field position football. But uh, you know, they're doing a great job on their defense, uh, mixing up some looks, kind of confusing us a little bit, and we've got to get, you know, we got to get back to what we do. It's disappointing what we're doing on offense, but at the same time, you know what, our defense is playing great, and we've got to continue to do that. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thanks. Well, not too bad, though. 212 yards. They had the one big pass play that ate up a lot of it. I understand that. Well, it's 65, 66 yards on that one play. I think all in all, can't be too unhappy with the way they've run the ball. 115 in this game. The most they've run the ball in any SEC game is 129. So I think Coach being a little hard on his team. And it appears Faton Bauta will come back in at quarterback as Georgia gets set to receive the kickoff that will begin the second half. 20 nothing. Austin Harden will kick off. And Reggie Davis is back to return it. Yep, another long field. There's no return. You know, it's not just turnovers, Vern. It's also great punt coverage, net punting. You know, you punt the ball high. There's no return on them. Florida is right. playing good field position football. Well, how does Georgia establish some kind of a running game? I think just make the easy plays. I mean, they've had the opportunities. Catch it when it's thrown to you. Block the guy in front of you. Hold on to the ball. Hit the open receiver. Oh. I mean, yeah, Florida's responsible for some of that. But Georgia has been their own worst enemy. In That's football. a nice shade of shirt. You yeah, we're matching. Way. Yeah, well, we just want to establish our neutrality. <laughs> Nothing more neutral than gray. What a way. Yep. And here's what I'm talking about. You know, when Florida had had their chances to make plays, they make the play. But it hasn't happened the other way. You got opportunities to catch the ball. Throw the ball. You got to hit people when they're open. You got to catch the ball when it's thrown to you. Georgia has not been able to make plays that 
you know, frankly, you would think a Division II football player would make. Bauda has now missed his last six. See if he can get it back. He does on this one. That's Jeb Blazevich, number 83. Were you uh, surprised at Mark Rick's decision to stay with Fatone Bauda? Uh, yeah. You know, that last one really wasn't his fault. I, right. I get that. But, you know, it's funny. Treon Harris is 3 for 12. And Bauda's 10 for 19. And we're thinking about replacing the guy that's 10 for 19. The 3 for 12 guy's doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep playing. Third down three. It took me 10 years to convince you, didn't it? It did. <laughs> I haven't mentioned the word momentum in the last four or five uh, years. This one might be a little high. Aye, 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 aye. That was not a sack, but there was pressure. And I'll tell you, coming inside, this guy, John Bullard, he stayed one more year to really get to be a better football player. And I believe he's earned more money playing in college than he would have played in the pros. He's upped his stock so much that his salary in the next five years will be more than it would have been in the six years prior. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, that just, we, we right should never, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Here's Ramsey. I'm gonna put it on my speaking list. Okay. <laughs> Check off this. I liked it, as a matter of fact. Mr. Danielson, take us through the first half. Vern Prince. is like the Walter Cronkite. If it makes sense to Vern, it makes sense to America. Oh, That's my the way God. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Three out, of, three out of 12. He's the star quarterback in the first half. About to had opportunities, though. When he had an eye open, he missed him. When he got it there, it was dropped. And, of course, you know, you can do all the planning you want in the world. You can have the greatest game plan. You turn the ball over three times, you're in trouble. You lose, Vern, you lose. You. Oh, oh, gosh. Come on, it's true, oh, right? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first down, Ted. Oh, 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 first down, Tim. Kelvin Taylor's had a big afternoon, and it's getting bigger. Yeah, it's going to come back. It looks like, I don't know, it may, maybe not. There was a flag by the umpire thrown into the middle. It could be maybe anybody. It could be a face, you know, hand to the face mask. And Taylor gimpy as he uh, limps off to the sidelines. We're thinking it was on Ivy, true freshman tackle who's playing guard today. Holding offense number 73. Yep. yep. Ten yard penalty. We play first down. Ivy is a really good prospect. Number 73. I'm going to circle both because I don't know which one it is from here. There it is. Yes, 73 left guard. And he gets his hand up on the jersey. See the distor distortion of the jersey for the Georgia defensive lineman. And they're going to call it. The Loach got and drew the penalty. Number 25, Jordan Scarlett, is on for Kelvin Taylor. Here's the toss. Forced inside by Malger. And Lorenzo Carter wraps him up. Let's see if we can uh, determine what happened to Kelvin Taylor. Right at the end, with his knee right into his face. It's a bit of a blow. Second down, 17. Good foot, Callaway. Got a blocker in front with three defenders. And uh, let's go down to Alley for an update on Kelvin Taylor. Kelvin Taylor already making his way back to the sidelines. The athletic training staff taped up his left ankle over his shoe, and he got up pretty quickly. He should be okay. All right, it's third down and six here. Kelvin Taylor, whose father Fred played in this stadium, longtime running back with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Third down six. Harris. It'll be fourth down. Lorenzo Carter with a tackle. Oh, are they saying a fumble? It came out. Yes. George is going to get it. Wow. That's
That's the first turnover by Florida in the last three and a half games in the SEC. And the best starting field position for an opponent against Florida in SEC play. It pops out, it was popped out by Bellamy, number 17, just before he got to the ball, to the ground. I think Bellamy's the guy that got it as mm -hmm. well, didn't he? Yes. How about this though, Nussmeyer and McElwain, the brain trust for Florida say, you know what, as little as Georgia is able to move the ball, we're gonna play it safe here. We're not gonna throw the ball, we're gonna run a quarterback draw and let our defense get back on the field. You play it safe, you turn the ball over, and Georgia has an opportunity to get life. Here's Tom Ritter. Apparently the play being reviewed. We can save him some time. Yes, we can. Right, Georgia yes. ball? Georgia ball. Georgia ball. These were not down. Just before his knee came on the yep. ground, the ball got popped out. And Tom Ritter. After review, the ruling on the film is confirmed. It was a fumble. First down, Georgia. Here's a, here's a word that uh, we want to. It was expeditious. Ex got yeah, it. huh? Well, this is the spot that Georgia can get back in this football game. You bet. First turnover. Since the Tennessee game, Gubano is the center. Malcolm Mitchell, top of the screen. Up it goes to Mitchell, or on the ground it stays. Michelle. I got Malcolm Mitchell and Sony Michelle, and they're both prominent for this Georgia offense. There's Michelle. And Mitchell stays out on the left wing. Let's see if they can get Mitchell maxed out in space. That's what he does well. Can they get him one on one and throw him the ball? Jalen Tabor defending him. Oh my goodness. Terry Godwin. Keanu Neal, number 42. Well, there has been talk that Keanu. Keanu Kanato Neal might be the best, best hitter on this defense. I feel like I got hit trying to get his name out. <laughs> but you can see it. Oh. That is textbook. It is a first down at the 14 yard line. 20 nothing Florida. First turnover since the Tennessee game. Play action. Oh boy. Bowda shakes it. Delivers. Oh my goodness. Jared Davis number 40 almost had another interception. Watch Baudu's reaction after he lets the ball go here. Just as he lets it go, he goes, oh my goodness. I might not be able to go home on the team plane if uh, this one happened. His reaction was, I can't believe I threw that ball. You think Georgia's had some trouble offensively? Second down and 10. That's Michelle. Well, this is gonna be four down territory, even though Bauda on that play had his life pass before him. Look at this, he's throwing the ball and as he goes, oh my goodness, he knew it as instantly he let it go. Can only imagine what Bulldog fans were saying watching the game. Mm. Third down four. Bout is in the game because he can run at quarterback. Are you not going to have one of those running Joshua Dobb type plays here? Georgia one of eight on third down conversions. Morrison coming in the blitz. Nope. Bout has got a man open. It. And it's incomplete. Talk to Jeff Collins, a defensive coordinator, about Bowdo and what he expected if he plays. He said they watched every play of last year and every play of the spring game to get a handle on what Bowdo might do in this football game. Well, he will hold for the field goal attempt now. Number 10. This is from 27 yards out. Marshall Morgan. 
on fourth down and four. I, I, I'm surprised they didn't go for it, I have to say. Well, they do get on the board. It's a big win for the Florida defense. Yes, sir. And it could have been worse. Maybe that's what Mark Rick was thinking. <clears throat> it could have been an interception, GD. We'll take our three and move on. In-state rivalry this weekend, or this week, I beg your pardon, on Thursday night. The Thursday night football game seen only on the NFL Network. Cleveland Browns, Joe Hayden, big star at uh, Florida defensively, and A.J. Green, pretty good wide receiver. It's a matchup. Yes. I say go Browns, though. Oh, uh, listen to you. How many years in Cleveland? Come on, we deserve it. Four. Okay. Four. Allie LaForce, a native Ohioan. Yep. I'm happy, though, for the Bengals' Andy Dalton. He's having a good year. He gets so much criticism. He's had a great season this year. That game on the NFL Network Thursday night. 20 to 3 here. It seems like Sims and Nance are on every night. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I watch, they're on TV. Brandon Powell with the return. Well, they'll be on this one. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. For 60 years, Goodyear has provided aerial coverage of college football's greatest traditions and biggest rivalries. First used in the Orange Bowl, and the producer director was Frank Cherkinian. Wow. He had Masters the idea. Guy. Yeah. Well, Jeremy Pruitt is going to have to get this defense to get another turnover. He grabbed one in this game from Treon Harris. Jeremy Pruitt and Treon Harris go back. Back to when Jeremy Pruitt was the defensive coordinator at Florida State. He recruited and had Treon Harris committed to Florida State as a defensive back. Ah. And when Florida offered him as a quarterback, he switched and came to Florida. Kelvin Taylor's back on the field, gets the handoff, and works hard at right guard and tackle. Second down seven. There's so many tie ins in this football game and they all lead back to Tuscaloosa. Basically. Yes, they do. Coordinators, offensive line coaches, line coaches, offensive coordinators all were on the uh, Nick Saban staff back there. Well, the banana peels are still here. Second down seven. Harris keeps it. Well, Jeremy Pruitt and Jim McElwain were on the 2009 staff. There's McElwain, the offensive coordinator. Pruitt on the back row. Yes, of course, they had 39 coaches on that team, so most everybody was a coach for that team. <laughs> you want a little personal attention? You come to Next time I go side. see Nick, he may mention something to me about that one. I think he probably will. They do have a lot of coaches, though. I'm just saying. Well, big play here for this Georgia defense. On balance to the left. High snap again. It's going to be a sneak. Harris goes right, being chased and missed. Now he fires it complete wow. to Jake McGee. Well, one thing all of Treon Harris's teammates have said about him. Okay, he might not be the prettiest, but he is cool under pressure. James Deloach, number 89, had his chance, but Treon Harris just stays calm, outruns him, finds his receiver, and delivers the ball. Remember, he and Will Greer battled for that starting position. This was not just like a, a second string quarterback way down the, the roster. This is a guy that almost won the job. Taylor comes left on his 18th ball carry of the again, ball game. Ball is it again. out? Yes, it is. Georgia gets it again. Well, my 
gosh, how about that? This one may be reviewed, though. Jake Gaines I, came I up thought, with the football. I'm sorry, Vern. Let's uh, see if his knee did not come down. It did. This one will come back. This will be Florida ball. And actually, the floor, you know, the, the screens, the high-definition screens here in the stadium are so good. The Florida players just looked up and go, it's our ball. We're coming. The Georgia <laughs> guys are going, yeah, you're right. We're coming defense back on the field. It's amazing how fast and how clear the they are. The field, recovered by Georgia. That play is under further review. Instead of using our monitor, I wonder if we can just get a shot of the big screen and watch it from here, well, basically. It's so good the technology, and so clear. It's amazing. Because the whole Florida offense, oh, yeah, it's our ball. That's our ball. They just walked right back out on there. There's knee. the knee. Yep, knee down, ball still in his hands, and everybody on the field saw the big screen. <laughs> there it is. Look how clear that is. You got a big screen at home, Vern? Not that big. It, <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, modest. You're modest. Yeah, I just, I'm thinking back inevitably. When I started in this business, there was no videotape. There was no color film used. It was all black and white optical sound. Uh -huh. And uh, my gosh. Conversation continues. Yeah, I think Jeremy knows that this ball's going back to Florida, but he's going to say, keep hanging in there, keep popping at the ball. We got to make a play. Our offense is struggling. We need to make the difference. Now, this is a Georgia team and against Missouri scores nine points with three field goals and will come back out here today in the third quarter and two and a half quarters and has a field goal to add to it. Six and a half quarters of play. Yeah, Mac knows it. Well, uh, Jim McElwain had his. Uh, he's looking at the Watch big it. screen. He looks. Uh, he looks. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, our that's ball. That's our ball. <laughs> that's our ball. Yep. <laughs> Mac just said it's good being in the SEC. They got all this money. They put the big screens up here. Colorado State. I had no idea what was going on. Well, he start, He's a native of Helena, Montana, and uh, high school quarterback. College quarterback. Really nice to see his personality, don't you oh, think? Yeah. I Gosh, mean, you yes. know, it's uh, kind of gets hidden as an assistant coach. Most of these guys, when they get their opportunity, turn out to be a lot different. You know, Les Miles, when he got his job at Oklahoma State, was a lot different than as an assistant coach. Well, uh, this is not expeditious, but it's, it, it's important. And you can see they're waiting on the down and distance, I think. The determination was made early on that this will go back to Florida. Here's Tom Ritter. After review, the runner was down prior to the at the 37-yard line. The clock will start on my ready. 8.05 to go in the third. We're here for Georgia, Florida, an annual Jacksonville tradition. So far, Balta has played every offensive snap, uh, starting his first game ever for Georgia. Harris, the big play for him was a 66-yard pass to Callaway for a touchdown. On second down. It'll be third down. That's Jordan Cronkrite. Somehow they added an R in there. Jordan Jenkins making the play. Actually talking to the Georgia coaching staff, the injury to Jordan Jenkins is actually a torn stomach muscle right where it attaches to his hip. And that's why it's so slow to heal. It may be one of those things that never comes back and healthy 100% this season. Third down 10. I stay conservative until floor. I, I don't want them going the short field. That's conservative. Yeah, and it's also dropped. Antonio Callaway may have been a little behind him. Until Georgia proves they can move the ball on my defense, I'm not giving them another short field. I mean, if they take one, that's the way it goes. But I'm not going to have my quarterback 
throw a third and long pass, get it picked off, and give life to Georgia. Let them earn their own life. If it would be my strategy, if I'm Georgia. Now Reggie Davis is back at the 25-yard line. It was his punt return muff. This is short. Davis avoids the first, can't avoid the second down at the 29. And there's that great punt coverage team. That's what allows you to keep that great field position that Florida's had all year. 20 to 3 still. Con call. By Aplac. Napa. Dr. Pepper. And by Chick fil A. No, I don't care. You're not as good as Mississippi State. But they've got some enthusiasm there. <laughs> well, it's an important week in college football. The first rankings will be released by the College Football Playoff Committee. Semifinal games. And uh, we have a committee of one yes. here. How do you see you this? Save all these guys their, their travel time right. down to Dallas. I can do it for them. If I was on the committee, this is what I would do. Okay, I'm not going to watch any tape. If you're undefeated and you're the Big Ten champ, you're in. If you're undefeated, SEC champ LSU, you're in. Clemson, you win out, you're in. Baylor, TCU, you win out undefeated, you're in. Stanford, Notre Dame, you're on deck. And Memphis has a shot. Temple's got to beat Notre Dame. Memphis has to be undefeated. And Old Miss needs to win out. Boy, let the committee handle that one if that happens. <laughs> They'll earn their. Everybody will be quitting that committee. There's only, wait, wait, they've lost three in two years. Keith Marshall, the ball carrier there. We'll have mass people saying, I want out. I want out. I don't want to make this decision. Can you imagine that? Chaos. That committee decided to send Memphis instead of a one loss Alabama. <laughs> well, now you're going to be the topic of some social media in Memphis. More? More? <laughs> oh, goodness. Second down and one. It's Marshall again. Plenty of time in this football game. If you're Brian Schottenheimer, you just got to run your offense. You can't make things up. You wait for your shots. He's produced a couple big plays. They haven't worked, but you just got to take your time, put points on the board, let that fourth quarter be a long fourth quarter, get points on the board again, and see what happens at the end of the game. First down, 10. Here's Bauta. He's gone the distance, dumps it off to Marshall. Over on the left side. Well, Gary mentioned Memphis, a big night at home for the undefeated Memphis football team. And that game against Tulane will be seen on the CBS Sports Network. Heard Adam mention earlier, big day for the CBS Sports sure Network. Is. Navy won again. Well, yeah. I, I tell you, that Memphis is in an interesting spot. Do they need help from Temple? I don't think Temple can make it. I only think one possible scenario is that Memphis gets compared to Ole Miss should they win the SEC championship. There's the battle short of the first down. Well, their record is 7 and 0. They defeated Ole Miss 37-24 and they've got Tulane, Navy, SMU at home. Houston is likewise undefeated so far. So just simple attrition. We'll see who uh, who wins the American Athletic Conference, whose commissioner is Michael Arrest. As some people say, the A A A A C. <laughs> Third and one. Marshall is in at the running back spot. Play action. Bowden looks deep. Now that didn't turn out so well. Brian Poole for Georgia. All right, this is a two-man route. That means you got a quarterback that makes three. That means eight people are blocking here. Nobody really open, and you get the first sack of the football game, coming from a good coverage sack, and eventually you get him. Fake. Ramsey 
the quarterback is incomplete. I would say this, not much has gone right for Mark Richt and the Georgia Bulldogs uh, in this game. Flag on the play, though. Yep. There was no foul for illegal formation as the snap was made for the scrimmage kick formation. The ball was intercepted. I mean, excuse me, the ball was incomplete. First down, Florida. Well, you don't make plays. You try to make up plays. And this time, you can almost feel it with another with a quarterback punting. There was one, two, and third, and look how well this Florida defense defends it. Nowhere to go with that football. They were ready for it. Brian Poole was right there. The players, cheerleaders, the hooting and hollering, foot stomp. Loose in the end zone. Touchdown. Lobs it deep, it's caught, Antonio Callaway! There's a good nine. One more month to go before he's retired after 11, 63 games. A dog currently known as Q will take over his Ugga tent. What is it, Q? Yeah. Huh. That's, that's the way it was written for me. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're, you're working on uh -oh. tactics here. Demarcus Robinson. Well, now what am I going to do? I'm going to come to the left and get a booming block. Oh, and a flag. Right at the end of the play. This could have been a 15-yard loss, and an unnecessary block right at the end of it is going to make it a smaller loss than 15. Marcus Robinson, who Jim McElwain told us, I wish I would have had this kid for four years. He's really, the light has finally gone on for him. He really is starting to get it. You can see his athletic foul. ability. Targeting in the 32 offense. Whoa. Line club. That plays under further review. It's a blind side hit. I think that's a good call. It's on Jordan Cronkite. Yep, that's a good call. Coach McElwain knows it. Well, needless to say, that's the reaction from the fans as they look at the uh, scoreboard video monitor. I'm Some here. guys yelling yeah. to Vern, tell the truth, Vern. <laughs> Go ahead, Vern, tell oh, the truth. Oh, my gosh. That's going to be, he's going to be a jack. I think he's going to get a targeting call. On yeah. Him. Didn't know we were a three-man booth today, did you? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Play under review. Cronkrite. Funny how Cronkite's name keeps coming yeah, up, it does. isn't it? One more look. Yep. Now he got him on the shoulder. I don't. I, I did it quite get to the helmet? I'm not. It, was very close. I think it did. I think he's going to miss the first half of the next game for and the rest of this game. Ruling on the field is confirmed. Number 32 disqualified. You know how 
I feel. I feel that that block should be eliminated from football. I think you should only block the direction that the ball is going. And if you want to block back, you should rub them. Basically, get in the way and kind of just push them out of the way, basically shield them. That is a very dangerous block, and there's no real reason for it. It's just a highlight block, basically. Well, when Florida plays Vanderbilt, yep. Concrete will miss the first half. That's that's just a dangerous play, and we can't have that in our game. So Treon Harris and the Gators are backed up to the 38-yard line, and it's first down 24. Harris looked like a designed run, and there's going to be a flag here. And usually comes in the direction of an offensive holding call. Gainis gets up gimpy. Well, Florida has to be a little careful here. Well, that would be not be good for Georgia to lose Jake Gainis. He's a tackling machine. You could see that ankle had already been taped up. And he must have tweaked it again. Penalty is declined. See if we can find him on this one. He's right there. Yeah, he just puts all his weight. Oh, and then he trips, kind of collides from behind at the same time, kind of gets whipped into Jordan Jenkins as he makes the tackle. Ryan Rankin, number 38, took his place. Play action, Harris. Let's it fly. Complete to Callaway at the 31. You know what's unbelievable about Antonio Callaway? He only played one year of receiver in high school, but the guy gets it about as well as any young receiver I've seen. Watch this. Runs a wheel route. It's not there. Then he senses trouble and finds open space for his quarterback. That's some of that stuff is unteachable. You know, and he looks over. Trion Harris has been hearing it from that, probably from the Georgia bench, and competitively he yells back. That's a gain of 32. They overcame a first down and 24. What a wonderful feel for being a football player rather than just a receiver. Tailgating. Advocare update. It was tight for a while, but number three, Clemson, now up 20 on NC State. Deshaun Watson, five total touchdowns. Zach Brooks doing the work here. The Tigers get Florida State next week, and the question, where will they land when the committee reveals its rankings for the first time? Rick says number one, BJ number two, Vern, Gary, and Ali. Over to you. I say, who cares? <laughs> Well stated. Let's go back to the Antonio Callaway catch. Oh, well, watch this awareness for Callaway. Okay, there he is in the slot. Now watch when he gets open in this area. He senses where the open field is, and he says, let me find this open area right here. I can feel it. Instead of keeps running down the field, he comes back into the open territory and gives the quarterback an opportunity to throw the ball. Unteachable. Some guys got it. Some guys they'll never learn it. First down, Florida after that Georgia timeout. 2.51 to go, third quarter. Taylor in motion across the backfield. Screen pass, near side, Powell. Yeah, Jake Kings. That's a, he's, he, Talk about another game, Reverend. Yes. Two years in a row, he led UAB in tackles. All he does in the middle of the screen there, 51, reads the play right away. He knows it's a screen. He feels the flow. He's the first one there. He beats inside and makes the play, or at least assists on the play. Well, they uh, retaped that right ankle. He missed one play because of the timeout. Am, am I wrong here, Vern? I mean, I say, who cares? Because if they win them all, they're in, right? I think so. Yes. I don't get it. I, I really don't get all the 
consternation. Right? Well, it gives you a talking point each week. No, them, them. Ha. <laughs> Taylor, there's Guinness again. And before it's all uh, in the history books, we'll have the Napa play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. That's uh, some distance, some time from now. By the way, you know, the studio threw it back to us. I thought Rick Neuheisel gave an impassioned speech, coach speech, three and a half hours ago to the young kids. That was good. I like that. That was a good spot. That was probably with were, were Adam's kids in there. Uh, it had to be some yeah. of them. Third down, 11. It's a good way to get on TV. Third and 11, take care of the ball. Number one, right if you're, if you're Florida here, field goal is big. Two wide receivers on either side. Yes, the Harris, oh boy. First down just outside the 10. You could almost feel it taking care of the ball. Remember they ran the quarterback draw when he fumbled it on a third down passing situation. Doug Nussmeyer comes right back with it. He said, listen, there's no way George is going to score these points on us. We are not going to turn the ball over in this game again. Now well, let's check the Florida Verizon red zone stats. 66 percent five percentage points above the national average. Yeah, that, that's actually the play I thought Georgia would run on third down with Bata down there. Left side Jordan Scarlett. And this one will get to the fourth quarter with a 20 to 3 game for Florida. SEC East standings as we begin the afternoon. Florida one loss that to LSU Georgia two losses a thumping at home to Alabama and a loss when they uh, couldn't hold the 24 3 lead on the road to Tennessee. Just remember this was the year that Georgia was picked to win it and Florida was supposed to be rebuilding. We've reached the end of three. Florida leads it 20 to three. We'll return to Jacksonville right after this message. And a word from your local station. Now, sunset here at the St. John's River. And a view of downtown Jacksonville. We're not that far from the seaport. Meanwhile, inside, see the split? That's in the end zone. Uh, the red and black to the left, orange and blue to the right, 80,000 plus. Is that it right, right there? there? Right there, right there. All right, take your pick. Georgia, Florida, Texas, Oklahoma. You've done it. Or do you want to uh, just stay out of that? No. No, I don't like to take opinions. I like to shy, shy away from those controversial things. Who are you? <laughs> I've never seen that side of you. <laughs> Second down and three. We begin the fourth. Jordan Scarlett is the running back, deep back in the eye, follows the lead blocker. Down near the one. Well, we decided to go with our <coughs> semi formal wear and show you the essence of sartorial splendor. That's not bad. Huh? No, no. I and think it, the it, darker tie, though, Bert. Really? Yeah, I think it looks better. Oh, All right. no, it's fine. Uh, I disagree. We're voting in the press box, what and I just won. Nine <laughs> uh, I'm surprised by this. I, I thought there were plays to be made. I thought Georgia could have made enough plays to keep this game a football game. Basically through this three quarters, they've helped Florida as much as Florida's made the plays. Two questions. Are you surprised that Mark Rick decided to go with a, an inexperienced quarterback in this game? And secondly, he said to us he was going to use more than one quarterback. Yeah. Um, first question, no. Second okay. question, yes. I am surprised a bit. I thought he would come back with Lambert and keep mixing it up. Lambert is a superior passer. He's had more time in the offense all year, getting the timing down. And I thought to beat this Florida defense, you needed all your weapons. That's why I was surprised they made the change. But I think without Chubb, they needed to use all their weapons, and they have not been able to get enough passing game. Uh, you know, without passing game, the running game has been null and void. Yep. Well, saw the stretch of the chain just short, so third down at the two. 
the quick huddle they passed against LSU out of this one. Now they Toss. come back. Flag. Four. 94. Offense. Five yard penalty. Replay the down. Did the same thing against LSU on fourth down. They came out in a hurry up huddle. They went on balance to the right against LSU. They snapped it and it was a pass play. This time they do. Oh, it is. Little Here's flinch the toss. by Cox that yep. time. Yep, just the end of the line. Third and five. No. Coach looks at it and goes, wow, a touchdown would be so much better for us than a field goal. Kelvin Taylor back in the backfield, and you see Cox. Timeout. Whoa. Third down five. We'll be right back. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Well, we'll take you back to the first quarter. There's an interception. Marcus May. There's another interception. Bada in his first career start. And here is a really poor play by Reggie Davis. Drifted back, muffed the punt return, recovered by Nick Washington. And then 66 yards. Galloway, the freshman, tiptoeing down the left side in for the score. Kelvin Taylor, busy day to day. He strolls in to make it 20. And here's Morgan with a 27 yard field goal. That's where we stand. Oh, that looks nice. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Oh. Uh, you know, you and I are such uh, advocates of Twitter, uh, but this just came in, Gary, from our Adam host, Zucker, Adam Zucker. I think I just got body slammed by a satellite by Gary Danielson. <laughs> well, first of all, Adam's a good buddy. Secondly, Adam, you do 22 minutes. We do three and a half hours, right? I love it. We get a little testy. Up there. <laughs> Third down and five. I thought it was a good answer. I don't know why that's body I just, slam. I, I like that do. answer. Yeah. Quarterback, Taylor. quarterback draw again. My next tweet, by the way, will be my first. Third and five. And Whoa. Not much there. Jake Gainis, Adam Zucker back in our New York studio. Yeah, Vern, look, I, I appreciated it. I, oddly enough, the body slam felt pretty good from Gary. I think it, it was a good reality <laughs> check for us talking about the playoff rankings in uh, late October. Hey, was that your kids out there getting all that free candy from CBS, by the way? Oh, you know it. Yeah, my, my little mermaid took a second handful because she was pretty grumpy <laughs> most of the morning, but Coach Neuheisel <laughs> gave her quite the pep talk. <laughs> well, he did. I was ready to walk through a wall for it. <laughs> yep. Trick or treat. Fourth down and eight. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Brian. How about this? McElwain called timeout just before the snap, I think. I think he saved it. He saw it going down, going down, and he tried to call it. Yeah, timeout. Prior to the delay game, we had a timeout Florida. That is a second charge timeout. I don't quite understand that. I think I'd kick the field goal if I, if I was back. I'd just kick it. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by the Home Depot. Dodge. USAA. And by Sonic. And how do we get gorgeous scenes like this? Well, our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. For 60 years, Goodyear has provided aerial coverage of college football's greatest traditions and biggest rivalries. One of which unfolding before us, Georgia and Florida. 
He came in on blimp. So did he. I, I just think I'd kick a field goal here. I would not want two touchdowns and a long field goal to tie me. Fourth, and, yeah, I'm McElwain's been good on fourth down, though. Yeah. Five for five over Tennessee. Here's Harris. Chased. Throws it into the end zone, and it's incomplete. Well, it's going to be a sack on a 21-yard line, I think. Davin Bellamy, number 17, was chasing him. Yep, I think he got the sack before the ball was thrown. Nothing open in the end zone. Good coverage, and uh, they called him down before he threw the ball. I believe. I saw Tom Reedy, Ritter put his foot down there, or the lineman put his foot down. Nope, they're going to take it back down to the 11-yard line. Nobody in the end zone open, nowhere to throw the football. Ooh, it could have been a face Whoa. mask. Could have been, huh? Could have, would have, should have. The great Don Meredith line from 40 years ago now on a Monday night telecast. If ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. For sure. First down, 10. Reggie Davis comes in. Here's Bauta. Fires it. It's caught by Terry Godwin. Bauta for the game. 12 of 20. Well, 13 of 25. And there's Bellamy. Oh, dear. What? Face plant. He was stepping up to sit down, and they must take those. <laughs> he knew it. I what know. he doesn't know is that the camera was on him. Exactly. <laughs> Battle rolling out. Let's it go really deep. Caught. Malcolm Mitchell got on the ladder and went up and pulled it down. Now, Malcolm Mitchell, there's no doubt, is the go-to player on this football team. Bowda hangs in the pocket, good protection, and caught it and extended it as high as he could go. Really a competitive football player, Malcolm Mitchell is. He battles every play. 29-yard gain, first down 10. Deep right side, man for man. That's Hargraves down there with Mitchell. What a battle they're having. Well, Malcolm Mitchell, fascinating young man, good student. And uh, CBS Sunday Morning a couple of years ago did a feature on Malcolm because he chose to join a reading club. And it was essentially personal foul, roughing the passer, number 13, defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. Daniel McMillan guilty of the uh, personal foul. Here's Bauta. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep, two yeah steps. You don't think? Two steps. Oh, yeah. yes, I do. Okay. Good call. And here's the mark off to the 31 yard line. Well, Malcolm Mitchell joined this uh, reading club, essentially comprised of, of uh, ladies. And now he's turned around. He's written a children's book. It's called The Magician's Hat. Written by Malcolm Mitchell. Good on you, lad. First down and 10. Up the middle, Sony Michelle. Well, more on Malcolm Mitchell. Let's check in with Allie LaForce. Vern, ever since writing his first book, he got together with some friends and they started an initiative called Spread the Magic. It helps young students gain access to books on a more regular basis. So it gives first grade students a copy of his book, The Magician's Book, on the very first day of school to show them that reading is actually pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Second down and three. Valor. Again, it was a little behind Jeb Blazevich. And Marcus May uh, really reads the eyes of the quarterback really well. He and Keanu Neal, number 42 and 20, are really a good tandem against LSU that game two weeks ago. They had 22 tackles combined, the two safeties for Florida. Third down three. Mitchell near side. Bowda 
Now he missed him. Did he catch it? Ooh, I think he. Yes. yes. Godwin, number five. Well, this has been a successful drive. Ball's behind. Godwin cradles it. That's close. The ball hits the ground, but did he control it? You see, the ball was behind. Looks like it's going to count. Yep. Again, he's got time. He's in the end zone. This one. Did he control it? No, he did not. This might have been Tom Balto's best throw of the day. Great timing on the play. He knew where he wanted the ball to go to. Put it in a great spot. Defended well. Antonio Morrison very fortunate that he didn't get dinged. Here, Morrison gets his arm in there, but I don't think, I don't think on first glance he caused the drop. Second down, 10. Up the middle, Sony Michelle fights that he might have another first down. Sony Michelle had been so quiet in this football game. Not catching the ball, no big running plays. When they throw the ball a bit, now they can run the ball a bit. And the Verizon Red Zone stats for Georgia. 48% not very effective according to the national average first and goal here about it tipped Looks like it was Brian Cox jr. Kind of rubbed to the outside play and Oh, it was either oh. Neil or Cox that got the ball Neil coming off the edge. I think it was Neil Upon this, further review, they might have both got it to tell you the truth. Second down goal. Georgia trailing by 17. If I'm Florida, I am ready for a quarterback run. Pulls it up. He's pursued. He fires in the end zone. Intercepted. How about that? Keanu Neal. Interception, Florida. It was the most positive offensive moment in the game for the Bulldogs. I think Jalen Tabor for 31 tipped the ball. I think he knocked it backwards to Neal. Let's watch this play. Does Tabor swat it away? Yes, he flicks it out of the Georgia players' hands and swats it away. Look at that play. Malcolm Mitchell and Tabor fighting for the fighting for the play, and it's not to Neil. Not your day. It's not your day. 86 yard drive, nine plays, no points. Now let's take a look at our AT&T strong performance. Well, here's just staying with the play. Here's the matchup. Tabor against Malcolm Mitchell all the way across the field. You just keep working, running, chasing, get your hand in there, and Tabor actually takes his right hand and backhands it back, and Neal ends up with the interception. Ball was thrown slightly behind. That's what gave Tabor the opportunity to produce the turnover. So the combination of Tabor and Keanu Neal Third interception off the arm of Fatone Bout it got real interesting if Georgia would have scored there. I'm oh, telling you, ten yes. point game and Coach McElwain would have been second guessing that decision. Tipped and caught Jake McGee. Gain of eight, second down two. McGee, who transferred from Virginia, where he was a teammate of Grayson Lambert, who started the first seven games for Georgia this year. This afternoon, Lambert has been relegated to signaling in plays. Second down two. Kelvin Taylor gets it again. 
What a big play that was in the end zone. Yeah. My gosh. Ten-point game gets you a little nervous with this much time on the clock. Would have been over ten minutes to left. And all of a sudden, you know, one mistake, and it becomes a real tight ball game. Mm -hmm. Taylor Not now. A, Excuse me. Go ahead. 21 carries for Taylor. 97 yards. First down, Tim. We're hanging with the game. With the Georgia fans on the far side, oh. they've left. Half of them have left. Yes. I would say significantly more. Go the table again. Leonard one, Floyd makes the tackle. One of the talking points for Coach McElwain on Kelvin Taylor is that he's getting what's been blocked for him. I thought in this game he showed a few more dashes in the secondary. And I thought his quick feet. You could tell the bye week helped Taylor get his quickness back. Those running backs, you know, you play six, seven, eight games in a row, you're ready to take a break, especially when you got two true freshmen behind you. He's been the main guy. He looks uh, like he's much quicker today than he's been the last couple of tapes I watched. And he'll get a rest now as Jordan Scott takes his place. Here's Scott up the middle, out of a tackle across the 50. Foot race. One player has an angle and he bumps him out of bounds. It's Malcolm Parrish, number 14. But a terrific run by the freshman Jordan Scarlett. He just says, Leonard Fournette, who? I did him in the scouting all week. I got killed by my teammates playing tailback and giving a picture as Fournette. And hey, it's a lot easier on the field when you got your number one guys blocking for you. Well, that's his longest run of the year. It was 60 yards, his previous long. Oh. Well, remember, the longest run in the SEC for Florida was 47 by Taylor. Only one run this year over 20 yards. So make that two. Scarlett with 60 on that one. And he comes right to flag his throne. Two flags. <laughs> Seven thirty-two to go in the ball game. Well, Florida in a run, holding number eighty-three offense, ten-yard penalty. We play the down. In the SEC this year, the Florida offense has not put four hundred total yards of offense in any game. It looks like they're going to approach it. They're 371 now, mm -hmm. so they could come very close to their first 400-yard game. Right now, Coach Spurrier is going 400, 400 and three quarters back in the day. He said it better. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I haven't seen him in a while. I don't have it down anymore. Kelvin Taylor gets the handoff, darts to the outside. Nice. Oh, boy. Nice. Talking about the quick feet, huh? They're back. Really nice 16 yard touchdown run. Kelvin Taylor. Watch this. Tackle this if you can. One. Woo. Malcolm Parrish thought he had an angle and he just barely touched it. Austin Harden with the extra point. Kelvin Taylor. Yeah, you can tell this guy has got his feet back and he's going to be a weapon the rest of the season. Who love this sport and live for nights like this. Hornet, LSU touchdown. Oh boy, touchdown, Alabama.
Well, Gary, we've got them both top ten again. Uh, this annual get together, featuring this year Leonard Fournette and Derek. Yeah, and Reggie Raglan and Kendall Beck with the middle linebackers with those collisions and Saban and Miles and eight o'clock Eastern. That's all you got to say. Mm -hmm. Leonard Floyd put in a lot of work exhausted. You know, we talked about expectations and pressure at the beginning of this game. And I said that this for the first game, Georgia was the hunted instead of the hunter. Well, they answered. But at the end of this game now, the Georgia football program will have to deal with the expectations not fulfilled this year. For the third straight year, they're going to have someone else representing the East when they were picked to be the best team in the East. Well, Georgia and Auburn preseason favorites in their respective divisions. Don't forget the Ram postgame show coming up when this one uh, is put to bed and we've got seven minutes and four seconds of game time remaining. By the way, that's another thing we can skip is that SEC media days when they pick who, the, who wins both sides. Well, they're going to be wrong, wrong every year. They're every, wrong every year. Every year. Oh, gosh. First down and ten. Sony Michelle gets the handoff. Well, apparently Mark Rick is just going to stay with uh, Fatone Bauta. He told us, told Ali, told us yesterday, I'm going to use more than one quarterback. He hasn't. Uh, rushing in the last two meetings. There's Grayson Lambert. Started every game after transferring from Virginia, where he was. Uh, the starting quarterback, but use that rule about graduates. He graduated in anthropology. Yeah, I don't that don't, summer. Don't really know why Sonny Michelle's running this ball right no. now. I mean, you know, he, this game is basically over. And I'd be putting Brendan Douglas in there at this point, and, uh, trying to get Sonny Michelle healthy. Wouldn't want to get him hurt. About a tip. Incomplete. Well, Mark Richt is in his 15th year as the head coach, a remarkable record, but uh, has had problems in games of some magnitude. Well, he gets it. You know, I was talking to him out in the field. He knows, you know, these big games, rivalry games, you got to win. You know, there's really no excuses. You, you got to do the press conferences afterwards, but. What can you say? They blocked better than us. They tackled better than us. They had a good game plan. We didn't hit the guys. We had an opportunity to make some plays. We didn't do it. And uh, basically, Georgia deserved to lose the football game. Well, you talk, Gary, about the expectations, the pressure that comes with those expectations. Do the Does the pressure increase after this game is over? Well, that's a good question. You know, these programs in the SEC, there's about six of them. Where if you don't play for the SEC championship, it's a long offseason. So I would say that's probably a yes. Third down eight. Watch out. It's intercepted. That's four. This one from Jared Davis. Trying to dump the ball off to Brendan Douglas that time, and Douglas cannot handle. A little easy pitch catch, might have been, you know, six inches too wide, but in this game, every ball that's a little wide or a little high goes to the Gators. Last time they scored less than 10, and back will go back to 1969. They did beat Missouri two weeks ago, 9-6. First time in 20 years they had a victory without scoring a touchdown. That was against Kentucky in 1995. So the offensive woes 
for Georgia continue. Bauta, 15 of 33, 154, but the big number on that graphic is on the right-hand side, four interceptions. Bauta mentioned that he uh, born and raised in Brooklyn. His parents are Albanian immigrants, and the family moved to West Palm Beach, Florida, when he was a junior in high school. Well, I feel for you. You get an opportunity, you get an opportunity in a big game, and it just doesn't work. It's no. tough, it's tough to swallow. Everybody's got those hopes and dreams, you know. It doesn't work out. Let's go back and spend a moment or two with Adam Zucker. And here I am again, Vern. Iowa rolling to 8-0 today. Desmond King with his seventh interception on the year. This one, he takes 88 yards the other way. Who's going to beat Iowa? Their remaining opponents have a combined conference record of 3-13. and They've only allowed one rushing touchdown all year, guys. Adam, I didn't see that one coming back in uh, August. Third down and two. Good job to give Scarlett some opportunities to run the ball. I think McElwain understands that for Georgia to win the championship, you're going to need two backs. Taylor is a pretty much a known commodity. You got to get the young freshman ready and confident and having the play callers confident that he can call any play in the playbook. That's a first down 10, 320 to go in this game. Just went over 400 yards in offense the first time in the conference play. Working the clock, it's now at three seconds on the play clock. And here's Scarlett once again. Well, Austin Harden has been the place kicker, started as the starter this year. We thought he might not be able to play today. And earlier in the week, this twi tweet went out. Last week, I beg your pardon, all call for kickers. They're looking for walk-on players. Visit the football office. And so initially, we were told 215 or so showed up. And then Jim McElwain talked to the hopefuls. They had to go through a tryout process. And here's the guy who won it, Neil McInnes. And we thought we might see him today. Uh, Austin Harden was able to go, but McInnes, uh, a pretty amazing story. Here's the handoff to Taylor. And let's go down to Allie LaForce. Thank you, Vern. McInnes has been quite an athlete his entire life. Letter winner, football, soccer, track and field, even marching band. In high school, he also graduated valedictorian. Now, I got to talk to his father, Michael, as they were driving to the game today, and he said it's kind of like a visa commercial today. I've spent $240 on tickets, $74 for parking, $175 on Gator, Gator apparel, but seeing my son play in the Florida-Georgia game, that's priceless. He had a great sense of humor <laughs> to him, and they're very proud to see their son out there, even if he doesn't play. That's for well, sure. Well, Jim McElwain needs to let him kick a field goal or an extra point. Just... Round out the story. Good idea. Taylor. But there may not be time. That's it. They should be able to take a knee and finish this yeah. game off. Well, how about this Gator team? They're one win against Pandy from being in Atlanta. No one. Certainly I'm none I'm of us I'm in this booth. I'm no good at this. I, I make fun of everybody else, but I'm no good at it either. But I didn't see this coming. Remember, they were a fourth and 14 away from losing to Tennessee. And they've got a first down 10 with a 24 point lead here. Less than a minute to go. Interesting. No need. Yeah, it is very. I don't get that one. Mark Herndon. Oh, they just wanted to get a, a run for a young player. There you go. So they didn't get a field goal for the guy, but they got a run, a run for someone else. McKinnis will be able to tell his kids 
after he becomes a dentist. That's his aspiration. Right, there you go. You know, a picture of him in that Gator uniform will be on the wall. When you're leaned back and he's drilling, you're going to be able to see that picture of him in that Gator uniform. Take away the pain of a root canal. <laughs> Unless you're a Georgia fan. Yes. Uh, if he gets out of dental school and heads to Atlanta. <laughs> uh, McKinnis, an Eagle Scout, by the way, just wow. to round out the resume. And let's update the East standings. Florida goes to five and one in the East, seven and one. Georgia falls to three and three. And up next for Florida, Bandy at South Carolina, Florida Atlantic in Gainesville, and Florida State in Gainesville. Well, that would be interesting right before the SEC championship. Foot. Treon Harris for the day started two of 11. I thought he'd have to throw 20. He threw 19. <laughs> well, the play of the game for Napa Auto Parts. Treon Harris was two of 11 at this point. He had missed nine passes in succession. And he finds the freshman Antonio Callaway skating down the sidelines. Let's listen to Mick Huber of the Florida Radio Network. Just takes the snap, rolls to his left, near the sideline, looks to fire the ball down the field for Callaway. He makes the catch and breaks the tackle, and he's going to take it in for a touchdown. Oh, my beautiful throw and catch, and the Gators score on a 66-yard touchdown pass play to Antonio. Antonio Callaway has become a star in this his first year at Florida. Well, we've got some great freshman young receivers in this league, but uh, Callaway does not have to take a back seat to anybody. Well, thanks to our guys in the truck led by Greg Silver, Steve Milton, our guys upstairs, Chuck Gardner, Butch Bear, Dave Moulton, and the rest of our 70 plus person staff. For Gary Danielson and Allie LaForce, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Jacksonville, where Florida wins it big. The Ramp Post Game Show is up next after these messages and a word from your local station.